reflexive relation so what reflexive relation is so for every element a that belongs to the set pair a comma a should belongs to r then you can call that relation as an reflexive relation second property that we have seen was an symmetric relation symmetric relation so what symmetric relation property says if pair a comma b belongs to r it implies that pair b comma a also should belongs to relation r so let us take one example let set a contains three elements 1 comma 2 comma 3 and let relation r which is defined from set a to set a which contains the pairs 1 comma 1 Two comma two, three comma three, one comma two, and two comma one. Now, if I want to check whether this relation R, whether this relation R is reflexive only or symmetric only or both reflexive and symmetric. So let us check. So what is reflexive property says? For every element that belongs to the set, pair A comma A should belongs to the relation R. So, set A contains three elements: one, two, and three, right? And the pair one, one for every element in the set, right? Pair one, one, two, two, and three, three belongs to the relation R. Hence, you can say it is a reflexive relation. Hence, it is a reflexive relation. Now, to check whether it is symmetric relation or not, what symmetric relation? A uh, symmetric property says if if pair a comma b belongs to r pair b comma a also should belongs to r just check with relation r there is one pair 1 comma 2 right and there is also one pair 2 comma 1 in relation r so a b b a so both are there hence it satisfies the symmetric relation property as well so you can say this relation r satisfies both reflexive and the symmetric property now if this relation r Contains only the pair one one, two two, and three three. So there there are no pairs one comma two and two comma one. Simply this relation R contains three pairs one one, two two, and three three only. Okay. Now, which properties, which about two properties among reflexive and symmetric? Uh, this relation R satisfies whether it's simply reflexive or only symmetric or both reflexive and symmetric. So, looking at the relation R, which is defined on the set A, which contains three elements, so pairs one, one, two, two, and three, three are there in relation R. Hence, you can say this relation is reflexive relation. Now, whether I can call this relation uh, as a symmetric as well? Answer is yes. It is symmetric. Why? If you look at the pair one comma one, right? For symmetric, what is condition? If A B, then B A should be there. Pair and its reverse pair also should be there in relation R. So if one comma one, its reverse will be again one comma one, which is there in the relation R. Two comma two, its reverse will be again two comma two, it is there in R. Three comma three, its reverse is again three comma three, it is there in relation R. And anyhow, in relation, if Any of the pair gets repeat, we count that pair as one pair only. Okay, so so it is said it also satisfies the symmetric property as well. So if you come across such a relation which contains pairs one one two two and three three, right? This is an example. Okay, or you can also say like if relation given relation R, if it is Uh, only reflexive you can say that relation as an symmetric as well so this relation r you can say also satisfies the symmetric property is well now now next property that we have seen was an anti symmetric relation anti symmetric property or anti symmetric relation how it is defined if pair a comma b belongs to r it implies that pair b comma a does not belongs to r 
it should not be there in r unless there was important condition mentioned unless a equals to b what is meaning of unless a equals to b that we will see suppose relation r is given as 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 Three comma three and two comma one only four pairs. Again, assume uh, this is defined on the set A which contains three elements one, two, and three. Okay. Now see, looking at the relation R, which is reflexive as well because one one two two three three is there, right? And two comma one belongs to the this relation R, right? But one comma two one comma two is not there in relation R. 1 comma 2 is not there in relation R. Hence, you can say is this as an anti-symmetric relation. Now, what is this? Unless A equals to B property, meaning is pairs 1 1 2 2, right? 3 3, like pair are allowed in anti-symmetric relation, right? Okay. Now, what if these pairs are not allowed? Means strictly you have to. You want to follow this rule. If A B belongs to R, then P comma A does not belongs to R. There should not be pair like one one, one one two two and three three else, uh, also should not be there in relation R. If such a thing happens, right, then such a relation is called as an asymmetric relation. Asymmetric relation. Uh, for example, I can write an uh, example of asymmetric relation as in like one comma two, three comma two. Four comma six, like this pair, which may be defined on any kind of set. One two, two comma one should not be there. Three two, two comma three should not be there. Four six, six comma four should not be there. And also for every element in the set, pair A comma A should not be there in this relation. R. This strictly has to be followed, right? So this A comma A belongs to R. It is allowed in anti-symmetric, but it's not allowed in asymmetric relation. That you need to remember. So this is one more property you need to remember. Next property that we have seen was in transitive relation. Transitive relation. How it is defined? If pair A comma B belongs to R and B comma C belongs to R, it implies that A comma C belongs to R. It's like A related to B, B related to C. Hence, you should say A is related to C. The next. The definition, important definition, we have seen was an equivalence relation. Equivalence relation. So, what is equivalence relation? If your relation satisfies the property of reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, you can say that relation as an equivalence relation. And One more important property is called as an partial order relation. So these are very very important definitions. Definitely, you will find one question in exam based on these definitions or properties. So if your relation satisfies the property of reflexive, anti-symmetric, anti-symmetric, and transitive. And transitive, you can see that relation as an partial order relation. So, very best example of partial order relation you can say as an A divides B. A divides B. Like uh, suppose you have the uh, uh, set which contains elements like one comma two comma three, and relation is defined as A divides B. You can write the pairs as uh, as every element divides itself. You can write one one, two two, and three three, right? Then one divides all, one divides two, and one divides three, right? Then two doesn't divides three, so you cannot write two comma three. So only these these are the pairs possible on this set A. Relation defined as A divides B. Now we can check it is reflexive as one one two two three three is there, right? Reflexive. It's anti-symmetric. Yes. One comma two two comma one is not there. One comma three three comma one is not there. 
and 112233 a comma is allowed in anti symmetric so you can say this as an anti symmetric is well right and it's transitive it is transitive how check 1112 right 1112 a b b c hence 1 2 should be there 1 2 should be there it is there 1 2 likewise if you check all possible combinations you will get this relation is transitive as well hence you can say a divides b relation is an partial order relation